Hello, 102 students, and welcome to your virtual rabbit dissection for you. Very real for us. So I am here, Dr. Spaulding, and we also have... Chris. Put your hand in there so they can see you. There you go. Woo, there you go. There hands. And uh, Justin's off, off camera completely. Hello. And so what we're going to be doing is basically dissecting for you one of the rabbits that you would have been dissecting. And I decided to start the video, well, before we had even taken it out of the bag, just to show you how these specimens show up. So you can see they're in these vacuum sealed bags. Uh, they keep for a while. So in case you were wondering what's gonna happen to some of the supplies we had, they're just gonna stay here for next year. So we don't have to toss any of these rabbits or anything, which is good. Cause you know, you never want specimens to go away uh, for any reason. So if you're wondering where these rabbits come from, they are actually bred for this. And then they are humanely euthanized. And typically they, they actually tend to gas small animals of this size. They, um, yeah, they, they, they gas them and then they typically do a heart injection to make sure. It's, it's a lot like euthanasia in a vet's office. Because uh, they do, they are concerned with, you know, being, you know, ethical. Um, there's also a practical matter is if you do a traumatic passage from this life, the specimen gets damaged. So, I mean, that's not the primary reason that it's humane in euthanasia, but yeah, there you go. Okay, so you see these come from Carolina Biological Supply. You've seen that name before. Um, so Caro Safe, that means the, the, the lovely smells we're gonna have coming off of this rabbit, which if you hear us gagging or anything, it's, uh, it's not formaldehyde. Uh, it's a preservative, it's a little bit better. It doesn't, the rabbit's not gonna look as gray as some older dissections you might've seen. It's gonna look a little, little bit more fresh, a little bit more lifelike. Um, Triple injection means they have injected the arteries with red latex, the veins with blue latex, and you can see some of it's kind of come out from there. And the hepatic portal system is um, yellow, which that injection is sometimes a little in something as small as a rabbit, but we'll see how it came out. Um, supposedly, so female, sometimes they make a mistake with that with these smaller rabbits, but quantity one, I'm pretty sure that is correct, not another rabbit hiding in there and so if we show you the kind of kits we're working with this one's open but these are the dissection kits we have here um, where they have oodles of implements that are going to be used for different purposes you know, scissors grabby pliers scalpel oh just keep okay scalpel that you know never wave it around like this i'm a professional and other you know probes and then the best tool of all the blunt probes that we have is our fingers we're gonna be using a lot of that so the way you start is you want to open the bags at one end and you want to cut to leave a lot of the bag left because these rabbits are going to need to stick around and the moment you expose them to air one of the big enemies of anatomy starts to come into play, which is evaporation. And we're gonna lose the water in there. Now, if we just left the rabbit like this, we wouldn't lose much of any water though, because you know this is still a complete rabbit. It has its skin, which if you listened to the lecture already, you know, I talked about epithelial tissue. You know, the epidermis, the skin is an organ that's got epithelial tissue and connective tissue together. Remember, organs are two or more tissue types. And the purpose of the skin is to keep the outside out of the rabbit and the inside in the rabbit. And a lot of that is moisture. So the skin actually does a better job of keeping liquid in there than the plastic or any paper towels we're gonna do. Fortunately, we are going to be opening the skin and we're actually going to, uh, you know, the next video will be up next week. We'll actually be taken next week so you can see what has, what occurred. So basic anatomical terms before we start cutting open the rabbit, some terms to be very well aware of, which will help you in anatomy is 
So this is considered anatomical position and a quadruped is basically like this. If this was a, a biped, we'd lay it like that, but anatomical position is typically considered like that. Um, again, a cadaver, they're gonna be laying on their back with their palms up. And so what uh, anatomical position is basically, okay, this is kind of the default way we're gonna think this animal is because as we are dissecting it, we're gonna move it around and what's on top may suddenly be on the bottom. And that can get really confusing when you're trying to say where a structure is relative to something else. So we always kind of pretend the rabbit is like this and we use some set terms. And for example, if it's towards the head, that's considered caudal. So we might say like a muscle is more caudal than something else, you know, a structure, you know, one way to think about it is the heart and lungs are caudal to the digestive organs and caudal means head, you know, it's Latin. Um, and then, I'm um, not caudal, guys, it back. Caudal is tail. I said it backwards the entire time. <clears throat> yeah, caudal is the tail, cranial is the head, because cranial, cranium. See, we're all, we're all suffering from this, not talking to other <laughs> people, we're forgetting what everything means. Yeah, caudal is the tail, so towards the tail is caudal, towards the head is cranial. Too many things start with the same letter. Just confuse everything. Um, and then you'll, you'll see the word caudal again and again, like here's the tail, that's the caudal vertebra. So cranial, caudal, and then if we go right down the middle, that's medial, and then towards the edge is lateral. So here, you know, the hand is lateral to the head. And you say, you know, here, the spine, the tail is in the midline, you know, the spine is medial. Everything else, you know, if we flip it over, you know, we can say, you know, here, you know, this is, this is media, the midline. This is also, if we cut this rabbit, if you think about imaginary planes, this would be the sagittal plane. And actually any plane that goes like this is sagittal, but this is the mid-sagittal plane. That's what people talk about the most. Um, you could cut it like this, it's considered, you know, uh, coronal. And you can also cut it like this, but not a lot of people do that. So, you know, a frontal plane but you, it's very rare to cut it like this. Um, if we're gonna show you anatomical diagrams are typically like this or like that. It's very rare to do an actual cut like that. Um, other anatomical terms towards the top of the animal, the back, that's dorsal. The stomach is ventral. And you know, those things are gonna be very important when we're wiggling this all around because that way we're not gonna say top or bottom. It's gonna be dorsal ventral so again dorsal ventral and it doesn't matter you know which side is the stomach is always ventral the back is always dorsal uh, you've probably heard this term before if you haven't thought about um, you know like a, a whale has a dorsal fin that that's not a really fancy term it just means a fin that's on the dorsum so a lot of anatomy terms are really going to lose their luster when they get explained because they're not very creative at all um, other terms, when we get to the limbs, it's going to be important is proximal and distal. Proximal is closer to the trunk. Distal is more towards the, t the toes, the fingers. And so, you know, the proximal distal. And one way to remember that is, you know, the, the end of the feet and the hands, here's your digits. So if you're closer to the digits, you're more distal. Um, you might also see rostral. This is short. This is the rostrum, so just towards the head as well. Um, I'm looking at a list to see if I forgot anything from your book. I'm right, glad manual it. You don't get to see the half the dissection guide. Um, yeah, those are the basic terms. And um, again, you can also think um, posterior. It's more towards well, the posterior. Anterior is more towards the head. Um, for a quadruped, that's really synonymous with cranial and caudal, but if you were working with a biped, it gets a little more <laughs> confusing um, because, again, we think about anatomical position. So, you know, for a biped, anterior, just think about, you know, how you're standing or sitting or maybe you're laying down right now, but pretend you're standing or sitting. You know, your anterior is, you know, your, your toes are more anterior than your heels, whereas if you are a quadruped, meh, <laughs> you know, not, 
you, you, you're, you're not necessarily lined up. So, so those are general anatomical terms. So again, cranial, caudal, medial, lateral, proximal, distal, again, anterior, posterior. That's one reason the butt is sometimes called the posterior. So there's a the least funny anatomy joke you'll ever get. And yeah, anything to add, Chris? No. All good. Uh, so now some specific things about the rabbit. As you can see, we are a mammal, so we're coated in this fur that is soaked with preservative. Um, that's why it's kind of you know out in all angles. Rabbit's ready to go to the club. Uh, we have our long. We have some distinctive rabbit features. We have the very long ears. We're again, so no bones in the ears. This is all cartilage. And this is cartilage that is stiff enough it will actually stand up on its own in life and you know the rabbits don't actually have the paw pads or the beans do you like to say it? they they have full furred hands and feet there is that on camera there we go full hit so yep see that um they do have a much longer tail than people imagine uh, this is all bone actually out to here like this is the end of the vertebra so it is tail is much longer than people think it just curls up and it's so fluffed up that when people think it's just a puff of hair but no it actually they do have a fairly long tail um the cranial features so here are the distinctive ever-growing incisors of the rabbit so the rabbit's nose, and here is a thing that's not common in primates, but most other mammals have. They have, you know, a cleft, cleft lip there, where they actually have a, you know, distinct, or I guess a continuous path, you know, from the, the uh, epithelial tissue kind of inside the nose down to the mouth. They don't have their lip connect there. And this is primitive for mammals. And if you've ever seen or heard of babies being born with a cleft lip, well, it's not actually too surprising because that's something that happened in primate evolutionary history is this closed up together. And we separated the rhinarium, this part of the nose, from the mouth surface. So primitive condition, you can see the tongue sticking out there. Um, and this animal is you know, obviously the muscles don't really want to move much anymore. No ATP. Those cross bridges are firmly, what are formed are formed. Nothing else is going to happen there. Um, we have the eyes, kind of hard to see. We're going to look at sheep eyes. We're not going to probably, we might take the rabbit eyes out, but they're, they're so small. There's not much to see. We're going to be looking at sheep eyes. And... That is the external features of the rabbit. Let's see, is there anything else to... Uh, you, you do have the rabbit whiskers, if I per se, right here. They're really shorn off, though. They'd be much, much longer in life. And I don't know if this was shorn off post-death or if the rabbit, another rabbit barbed it off, because that is one thing you will commonly see um, rodents and rabbits do, is they will actually overly groom each other for dominance and chew off each other's whiskers. So not very nice, but it happens. Uh, let's see. That, oh, and here you can see again this blue here. This definitely shows like this has been injected. This has been a vein that has its latex has left it a little bit. And this string here shows because there is a cut here in the neck, the side of the injection. Um, see, can you think of anything else to add about the external rabbit either, you two? Like the oh yeah so yeah down here it's very very hard to see with all the fluff and everything but again you know this is the urogenital system we have you know the the urethra here the vaginal opening and the anus um, but quite hard to see and it's not just entirely because of the preservation and it's dead it's also because it's a rabbit uh, I don't know if anybody's ever you know, the pet trade or anything, but rabbits are one of the things that, especially young rabbits, can be quite hard to properly sex because, you know, everything that happened there. If this was, uh, if we were doing rats instead, instantly, <laughs> instantly tell you what's going on with that. Um, yeah, there we go. 
Okay, so we are going to start skinning the rabbit. So what we're going to do is we're going to start making incisions and then we're probably either going to fast forward it or just do a jump cut because once we start skinning it's going to take a while um this would have been the majority of one of your labs if we you know this would have been like covering what the first 20 minutes of lab would have been setting up your rabbit and then you'd have two hours to skin and start looking at the muscles and everyone's like oh this is gonna be a really short lab and then like two hours later it's like why does this rabbit have so much skin so it is a process um, and there's different ways to start um, there's a incision in the belly done for us already it's up here at the neck I kind of with rat typically I actually like to start skinning kind of the back of the neck that doesn't work very well with rabbits um, we might cut the ears off Shh, don't listen but <laughs> so when you skin a rabbit and well the phrase is not more than one way to skin a rabbit but it's equally applicable is basically whenever you do a dissection the way you proceed is you need to think what is the purpose here and the purpose here is we are going to have this rabbit for at least a couple weeks and we're going to be looking at the muscles and other organs inside which means we want to keep the skin in as few pieces as possible because what we're going to do and we'll probably film that today actually is when we're done today is we are going to wrap the rabbit back up in its own skin because the skin this organ is the best thing for keeping moisture in the rabbit and you're going to see the nice freshly separated freshly exposed muscles today and then you're going to see a little bit desiccated muscles next week because despite our best efforts there will be some change now i will say one reason we've we've gone to using these rabbits is it's not as bad as some other dissections but you'll see it we might actually leave maybe one limb less prepared than the other to show you that next week um so yeah i think i'm going to see exactly how deep where these these go okay so that is very deep nothing very fluffy rabbit it makes it a little oh my head's in the way a little more difficult so this is one thing where you just kind of start now good scalpel thing never go like that here chris let's be bad be bad people put your here hold hold the arm or something especially never go towards somebody else bad don't do that um proper and uh if you are you know dissecting with a buddy typically if there is a sharp implement out one person's hands on the rabbit um, it is these things they are scalpels they cut skin that's what they're here for and this is you know this is just the simplest of all machines you're giving all the power there's no sensors here that will notice when they cut something living that's not going to happen it will just stop um i will admit i might occasionally cut towards my hand never do that <laughs> do what i say not what i do um i have cut myself i've never cut myself so i needed stitches with a scalpel and hopefully i don't record that mm -hmm. happening today but everybody who dissects will nick themselves i'm sure you have justin and yeah i'm sure you have chris uh but it's just gonna happen um but we're gonna be as careful as possible and part of that is you kind of go slow and steady because again we don't want to damage the rabbit and it's just like if you craft uh, you know if you sew or if you do word working or anything it's very easy to cut it's pretty hard to uncut so we don't want to go too deep because as we'll see shortly the skin is thick but it's not that thick so here if can you zoom in here so i've cut through the skin and there we go I'm kind of going a little a little lateral to the mid oh i think i've already already popped up a muscle in there so this you can see what i'm doing here this is the most you great thing the blunt probe that is your finger because your finger is going to easily separate connective tissue that's holding the skin to the muscles but it's not going to be strong enough to actually cut any muscles and the reason that i'm even like did i hit muscle or not is you have 
you have the major muscles, like, you know, underneath here, this is the rib cage area, so we have the pectoralis and, you know, the stuff leading to the other muscles leading to the limb. But you also have some kind of subcutaneous muscles, um, especially an animal like a rabbit that has the fur that, like, they just, like, bunch up the fur or things like that. You ever seen, like, your dog, your cat, or maybe you have a rabbit. I've had pet rabbits. Okay. That, you know, they kind of shudder, like, their fur wiggles back and forth. That is muscles, but they're muscles that just originate in the skin sort of the skin. Um, the closest we have easily think about is, um, you know, if you raise your eyebrows, you know, those, those muscles are not really tightly attached to any bone. A lot of your facial muscles, uh, you know, they originate in the skin and they insert on the skin. You know, they're not really, you know, you don't have those lip bones or anything <laughs> around there. So that's why it can be very hard. And see the skin, it was kind of hard to start cutting but once you get in there, okay, this is a great, there you go. Here you can see, okay, can you get in there? We have a good shot. Yeah, you can see here is, let me get my bronch up. Here is muscle. This is skin. And here is the connective tissue that is holding the skin to the muscle. And so here, you know, this is a, well, this is an obvious, this is a, I don't know the difference between a, a cut and a laceration. Laceration goes through all the levels of the skin. This is a clear laceration. This is not something you would want to have occur. Um, it's actually showing, but this is also why, you know, depending how much something is cut, you know, you might just go through the skin and not the muscle. Like a lot of surgeries that, you know, remove something that's not actually deep within the muscles, like a lot of, um, most simple benign tumors that you know maybe you haven't had to have, but you've had on a pet or something. A lot of them will just grow in this area between the skin and the muscle, and they'll open up your pet, kind of like this. They'll remove the tumor, and then they'll stitch your pet back up. And that's why if your pet does open the wound like that, it maybe doesn't look very pretty, but it's not actually nearly as life-threatening as you might think. Um, Hopefully that hasn't happened to you. I'm talking from personal experience with my very bad pets. Mm -hmm. um, it's very different from a spay surgery, which actually would go into the abdominal cavity. So, you know, here we are just going to be skinning the rabbit. We're in this first video, we're not going to be going into any of the cavities unless I make a terrible mistake. Yeah, but that would be a, a bit. and notice the skin, it's very, again, you know, I couldn't just go here and make a hole with my fingers but now that we have an opening i'm able to just kind of you know pull it apart a little bit more so the skin is designed to be hard to puncture there we go and get some fatty deposits right here hard to puncture but once you've punctured it it kind of opens up pretty easily and this is again why after surgery you know they really want people to rest you know uh you know, people and other animals, they want you to rest because it's very, very easy to split your incision and actually have that incision get larger than the doctor made it. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna go a little bit more cranially. Just kind of get up here. And again, you can see this, there we go. We see this nice subcutaneous, oh, and subcutaneous, that just means beneath the skin. Um, these nice subcutaneous blood vessels. This is a really nice injection they got here. Normally they don't get these these small blood vessels. So you can see here, this is, you know, the blood supply red was taking blood to, oxygenated blood to the skin. Blue was bringing deoxygenated blood away. And I do, we're gonna talk about this in the um, cardiovascular lecture, but blood is never blue. Blood is just brighter red and less, less bright red. Um, it's just a convention and uh, you might be like, oh, but people kind of turn blue if they don't have any oxygen. That No, your blood is never blue. It's just the convention. Um, so kind of come up here and you see these nice, this nice uh, connective tissue. Okay. Just kinda, I'm gonna try to go up here to where, where this incision they made is for the injection site. It's a good, a good cranial stop point. There we go. And you can see 
we did have a little bit of bursting it looks like of the latex but that's not that bad they've been far worse far worse so yeah we might we might do the ultimate cooking show thing and if this rabbit is suddenly replaced by a different rabbit in another video that means there was burst latex that's why we typically order a couple extra rabbits every semester because sometimes it doesn't always work or uh was it, was it last year we had the one where like all the abdominal organs had just decayed into nothingness <laughs> yeah that was a uh, I'm gonna need another rabbit. <laughs> there you go. And you see the skin also, I'm probably not surprised to hear this, but your skin is not, yeah, here I go, bad cutting towards my hands. The skin is not uniform thickness throughout. And you can, you know, tell this on your body, like feel the skin on your palms or the soles of your feet. It's far as thicker. Uh, same thing for the rabbit, it's a little thicker on the neck, it's thinner down here on the abdomen so like this was harder you know so i had to use a scalpel to get through that here i can you know kind of open it up with my fingers and just kind of try to go down a little bit more there we go look at that let's break that connective tissue And this is another reason you know I'm using my fingers instead of a scalpel is not only is this extremely easy to break but again I'm not going to damage a muscle if I have accidentally cut too deep and I have a muscle that's being pulled up I will run into it with my fingers and that will not break okay but yeah I've got enough now you can see just how thin this skin is extremely just shave part of this rabbit. <laughs> the skin is extremely, extremely thin. What would you say, like two millimeters, maybe? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, if that. If that. And up here, though, now we're looking at like five, mm -hmm. six. So it's, you know, five millimeters may not seem like something that's that thick, but for skin, I think the soles of the human foot, the skin can be like a centimeter thick. Maybe it's. Pretty intense. Okay, well, there we go. Look at that, right down the midline. So here you can see, then, oh, we got some bruising. Uh oh, we might need another rabbit. We'll find out. The worst gosh of bones. And then grab bags. That doesn't look that bad. The rabbit, again, it was open down here partially to do dissection, partially to prepare it for us. So that's why this incision is here into the viscera. So this allows us to peek a little bit and see how good it's going to be. It looks okay, I think. And uh, it's not, you know, obviously getting on camera, but the biggest clue we have when we get to this part, if we're going to need to replace somebody's rabbit, is a smell. And we're not running and gagging and knocking the camera on the ground to get away, so it's it's not smelling that bad. Here we go. Look at that. How quickly we have opened up the rabbit. Here you can see this great view of the subcutaneous. Some of the, they're not injected as well, but subcutaneous vessels. There's actually some nerves going through there and breaking. And the, this white stuff is that connective tissue. That's keeping everything in there. Um, this is not what gets messed up if you get a blister. It's actually the skin separating from itself. Um, it's got another, there is a term for if your skin separates from the muscles below the I forget what that is. And it's not like super mega blister though. <laughs> it's something else. But that that is a thing that happens. Okay. All right, we are down here to the leg. I had a lovely sound. 
We have more fat deposits down here. Um, we used to dissect cats, but we switched to rabbits because they have less fat deposits than them. You spent, sometimes the cats, we spent most of lab removing fat deposits. There's just enough in the rabbits. So there we go. We've, we've done a nice job of getting it off the torso. And uh, one thing I give advice to people doing dissections in lab is don't worry if you have to use a little bit more force. I promise you the rabbit won't won't complain, won't feel anything. Um, and yeah, a, a lot of this, again, I'm not even using anything from the dissecting kit. I just know what should be where and where to apply force or not. And I would say that, you know, I think it's fair, Chris, when you say that it doesn't go this fast. Mm. Yeah, so don't, <laughs> Don't think this is how fast your your skinning would have gone. I have skinned many rabbits. Kind of in wonder myself. Huh? I'm kind of in wonder myself watching. You're just like, ah! <laughs> yeah. Never been that fast for me. Well, that's why the, the first time we were doing rabbit dissection, I'd be like, they should be able to skin them in, in 90 minutes, right? And then get, oh no, oh no. <laughs> so, so much easier than the cat cat skinning. Them. Yeah, there we go. See this nice fat, fatty deposits. Okay, and I can almost, almost got around the entire, there we go. I can make contact, so I've separated it from the back. And again, I'm trying to do this in as least pieces of the skin as possible, so we can put its little coat back on. That's the easy and the hard part at the same time to do the trunk. It's hard because some of these muscles are very thin and this is where you're gonna have things peel up. It's easy though. This is just round two. Now we're gonna, it's a little hard, kind of punt it away from down here. Um, so coming off the limbs. So what I like to do, there's different ways to do this. I like to cut, I like to cut down, am I, yeah, there we go. I like to cut down on the inner side, on the medial side of the leg and start a cut there and just kind of not cutting my finger, work my way down to make a little inseam on the inseam line to kind of get a little pocket where I can get my finger in. And it's a little difficult I'm working at a different angle than I normally would for the camera. There we go. And again, short, sharp, shallow, shallow incisions are the thing to do with a scalpel because again, it's easy to cut, you can't really uncut. And then we can easily peel it off. Now, I'm going to leave it, I'm going to stop at the shank. So rabbit, this is where the upper leg is. So this is the rabbit thigh. This is the lower leg, all of this is the foot. So this is the rabbit heel. It's, it's homologous with your heel. The foot is just really long, and that's one reason they're really good jumpers, is they have a really long foot. And it is, not only is it really hard and annoying to skin the feet, there's no muscles on the feet. Kind of. Oh no, I cut through the muscle. Dang it, too fast. There's hardly any muscles on the feet, so we're not really gonna care about them. So what I'm going to do is leave its little feet leave his little booties on, and I'm going to just cut around, circularly, around. I'm gonna flip it. And sometimes I use the blunt edge of the scalpel. And again, look at that. Look at that injection. It's very, very nice. And Justin, you used your lab tech knowledge to close book the good rabbit, your yes. intuition. <laughs> You're like, I can just feel them through the bag. Yeah, I got, I got some subcutaneous muscle here, but oh, we don't, we're not really caring about much of the muscles on the lower leg, except the gastrocnemius, which you can find that. I believe in you. Everybody can find the rabbit gastrocnemius. There we go. So yeah, we have freed a leg. 
And notice, even though I've got the skin off, that doesn't mean all the muscles are nice and there and visible. That is going to be its own task when we go through, and we're not gonna start now, but we're gonna peel off this fascia, this other connective tissue that's keeping the muscle in place. Again, this is why, you know, what we're looking at here is why skin grafts can work is somebody who's like burned, you know, they might have lost their skin, but the muscle is still there. And so you can take donor skin or just make their skin grow back up and you put it on and if it binds, you get that connective tissue binds to the muscle, you'll get your blood supply and everything back there because your the skin is the thing that separates you from your inside from your outside, but it's not like everything's just like floating around there and loose if you remove the skin. Like when we do go into the abdomen next week, the organs are still fit, held fairly well in place by connective tissue. They're not just kind of, they're not gonna fall out. So media has lied to you. And some of the things that are a little harder to go through, you might actually hear them breaking, that is fat and thicker blood vessels going up into the skin. They're a little harder to break through. Okay, going over the back. Okay, so now I'm going to go do the other leg. I'm just gonna, gonna leave a little patch of fur over the, the groin area. Um, that is incredibly hard to fully skin. And there's not actually that much to really see externally. You can see a fat deposit. Look at that, you can see those nice muscle fibers. I don't know, some detritus. There we go. Look at I'm mean, still impressed by the quality of the injections in these ones. Oh, there we go. We burst. Mm. This is why bilateral symmetry is a great thing. Doesn't matter if one side of your rabbit is a little messed up. The other side is there and nice and waiting for us. Okay. Now I'm actually going to use. Super high tech. Oh, those are the scissors. Scissors are great to use because they're not as sharp as a scalpel. And if you can't see very well, you're not good. There's likely. also a blunt yeah. of scissors, too. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Got our little pants off, and I'm going to flip it. And I'm also going to not bother to skin the tail because that is also way more trouble than it's worth. There are muscles in the tail. They're all called caudal muscles. There, you learned them. Don't worry about it. See that nice, nice connective tissue there. And goodbye. Here, give that a pull, and just, yeah, just don't force it. Just pull it, and I'll break it apart as we go. There we go. Here's the shoulder blades. Okay, we're probably gonna have to stop there and work on the arms. Look at that. See the nice legs. We have our little booties still left on there. We have our tail still left on there. And we might clean this up more off camera, but that's going to be slow and boring. Okay, we've made it up to have to deal with the arms now. And again, so my goal was to leave us in as few pieces as possible. Done pretty good on that because when we when we uh, put this rabbit up today, we're just, we'll just fold it up like this and we'll pin it and that will keep moisture in 
better than anything else we can come up with. And I've actually, in some of my anatomy classes, we sometimes just leave them like this for a little bit without taking it off. Like if we were just gonna look at the legs, there's no reason to finish up here, but we're gonna look at everything. So now, I'm going to go on the arms. And the arms are very similar to legs and how we're going to do this. Um, it be a little trickier because it's much easier to mess up and pull some of the pectoralis on here. And I've kind of done that on both sides, but just the minor. You just got some minor, uh, uh oh, did I get the, did the serratus go up here? Oh no, they're on there. And it might just be, let's see. No, I think you're good. Sometimes just the impression of the yeah, I think, striations. Yeah, I think it's the impression. I think I think this is. I think this might be some sub. Come see what you think. I think that's more because like the pectoralis is obviously here at night. So I think pulled a little bit up oh, yeah. here, but this yeah. looks more. Yeah, that is. That is muscle, but serratus. Did the serratus come up? It doesn't. It might be some subcutaneous. Mm -hmm. So. But the good news is if we destroy something bilaterally, you don't get tested on it. That's the, <laughs> that's the rules. Okay, it's still going everything. Okay, so we cut out a little bit. And as you can see now, completely skinned. Uh, here, hand me the, the pelt. Completely skinned, um, had a haircut. And you know, it's, it's mostly one piece. Did a great press to myself. And yeah, there we go. And I did cut the ears off because they were continually getting over these ones. And I cut a little bit of the facial, exposed a little bit of the facial muscles. There's not too much to see that we're gonna care about in a rabbit, but here's the masseter. And you may notice like, you're like, okay, well, there's no skin on it, but it's still really hard to see individual muscles again this is going to be we're going to separate out the muscles but we're going to cut this video here and we're going to put we're going to do the muscle we're going to take a little bit of a break honestly because we've been here a while and we're going to kind of do some prep work on the muscles and then we'll show you kind of the end of that on the other side in the next video um, but you consider this is this is 1a for this week and then we're going to have 1b will be the next video so that was the external anatomy and skinning, and we'll see you back for you momentarily with the muscles.